respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another, uh, to another episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, tonight, inshallah, we are going to continue our discussion from the previous nights where we have been comparing between the justice, equity, and genuine respect of Ali ibn Abi Talib to his citizens during his ruling and the declaration of the rights of man and the citizens of 1789. Over the past few nights, we examined uh, up to the 12th article of the declaration and we came to the conclusion that uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, when examining these 12 articles, we came to a conclusion that Ali ibn Abi Talib mentioned uh, exactly the same um, segments, if you will, 1200 years prior to this declaration. However, before we commence uh, further into the show and the episode, let's welcome our very special guest who has joined us over the past few nights, uh, Sayyid Mulaffar Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you uh, finding uh, the nights of, uh, of Eid? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Fix my sleep. Inshallah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's one of the things to fix after Eid. Um, Sayyidna, uh, as I mentioned, and as we've been discussing over the past nights, um, equity and justice play a very significant role in the, govern in the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we've seen that uh, when discussing um, up to the 12th segment uh, and when discussing and examining the letter to Malik al-Ashtar, uh, the ruler of Egypt back then. However, tonight, inshallah, we are going to discuss uh, the rest of the articles up to 17, inshallah. from 13 to 17, inshallah. Um, uh, the 13th article states that a common contribution is essential for the maintenance of the public force and for the cost of, of administration. This should be equivalently distributed amongst all the citizens in portion of their means. Ali ibn Abi Talib implemented this, um, and as we've been repeating this um, in every episode, implemented this 1,200 years prior uh, to, this, uh, to this declaration. We see Ali ibn Abi Talib distributing the wealth uh, from the public treasury to every citizen overlooking his race, his religion, his faith, um, whether they followed him or not. Um, he still distributed the money to everybody. Or even his brother. Uh, he, even his, his close relatives, Ahsan uh, Sayyidina, even to his brother. Uh, when uh, Aqil asked for uh, a portion, an extra portion from the public treasury, Ali ibn Abi Talib heated up a metal and brought it close to, 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 his, his, hand. to his hand. And he said, uh, why was, uh, Aqil asked, why did you do that? He said, uh, aren't you not, are you ashamed of a, a man heating up a metal because of for fun and uh, not ashamed because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will heat a metal because of his anger. So we, we see the irony there, but uh, Sayyidina, uh, if you can um, elaborate more on the similarities between uh, this article and uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib's ruling. Inshallah. First, uh, if you remember, we mentioned how Amir al-Mu'mineen addressed his tax collectors mm -hmm. and uh, what he told them. He told them uh, basically how to uh, address the citizens, mm -hmm. how to collect the taxes from the citizens. Uh, if you remember, we stated that Amir al-Mu'mineen taught them how to go to the different communities and ask or acquire the taxes for the government. Amir al-Mu'mineen tells them, if you go to a city, walk humbly towards the people of, the, uh, of your nation so they're not in fear so that they have to pay taxes or money that, which they don't have. He tells them, walk towards them and ask them, is there anyone that has any depth with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If anyone responds, cooperate with them. And those who do not respond, don't ask them or repeat the question over and over again for them to pay out of fear. For those who do respond, then cooperate with them. Stand at their doorstep, do not go into their homes, yeah. 
whatever they give you don't ask for more and Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam teaches them how to be humble how to be gentle with uh, the people that live in his nation Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam tells Malik al-Ashtar وَتَفَقَّدْ أَمْرَ الْخَرَاجِ بِمَا يُصْلِحُ أَهْلَهُ And uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen tells Malik al-Ashtar that the people who pay taxes and pay their dues to the government always ask about them. Go and see how they're doing. فَإِنَّ فِي صَلَاحُهُ وَصَلَاحَهِمْ صَلَاحَ صَلَاحًا لِمَنْ سِوَاهُمْ When you do so, when you do so, there is a benefit not just to the people who pay tax to the government and give funding to the government, but it's a benefit for the whole nation. Seeking the happiness of those who do pay taxes, do pay zakat, do pay khums, do pay their jizya, to the government seeking their happiness as the happiness of the whole empire, Definitely. as the happiness of the whole nation. Definitely. Because the government needs its funding to feed the orphans, to feed the widows, to feed uh, the soldiers, to feed the military commanders, and basically every single occupation. Every single employee of, of, the, of the government needs to be paid. And all equal. And all equality, you know. And when people are not being paid their salaries, this uh, drives a nation towards destruction. Definitely. Now there is news that in Iraq, because of the lack of funding, that employees, government employees, will only be paid every three months. Do you think these people will sit patiently and not speak out or revolt? For three months, how will they feed their children? How will they pay their rent? How will they, you know, pump gas? How will they f buy food? So, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wassalam says, that when you seek the happiness of those who pay taxes, your taxpayers, you're seeking the happiness of the whole nation. Definitely. Because when it comes to the happiness of the taxpayers, you have found the happiness of, of everyone. Whether it's the lower class, whether it's those who are employed in your government, whether it's your military, whether it's your uh, bookkeepers, it doesn't matter. As long as everyone has, you know, bread to eat, mm -hmm. they will be happy. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam also tells him, النَّاسُ كُلُّهُمْ عِيَالٌ عَلَى الْخَرَاجِ وَأَهْلَهُ That people are are all one family when it uh, when it, uh, it's concerned to tax or when it comes to tax mm -hmm. if uh, one family member is not paying then this will cause stress mm -hmm. upon other family members if you have a family of five five brothers who you know help one another then the burden will be much less but if there's one brother that has to feed four stomachs or four of his brothers that are just sitting at home mm -hmm. and not doing anything then his burden will be much heavier definitely correct definitely and amir al-mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wassalam says that it's a major concern and a very crucial issue how tax is paid and how tax is spent. Just like you pay tax, the same tax is sent back to you for, you know, 
your relaxation and your benefit. Your tax money should, you know, rebuild your roads, redo your electricity, build your schools, give you insurance and funding. So just, just like you pay and people benefit, you will also be benefited by your own tax payings and the paying of taxes of other people in the nation. Definitely, this is very similar to the 14th article um, where it says all the citizens have the right to decide either personally or by their representatives as to, uh, as to the necessity of the public contribution to grant us freely, to grant us freely, to know what is used for. So uh, same to what Ali Abi Talib did uh, during his ruling. You know, he, he went for uh, supporting uh, the military and everyone back then, um, it's different from now. Um, everybody back then was, uh, when Amir Mu'mineen said that it was a time for war, everybody went for t to war. Some people that who had illness, um, as, uh, as Muslims know, that's a, it's, it's mandatory when a ma'soom, when, when an imam is in authority and calls for jihad, um, they, they have to rise up with them. So it, was for, it went for supporting everyone. And they knew where it was going. It wasn't hidden during the time of Ibn Talib. Ahsant. Contrary on the contrary of what we see with, with, with the rest of the, uh, of the rulers. And uh, to continue, uh, you know, Article 13 and 14, because they are very uh, similar. And uh, what I advise all our viewers to read the, the, the message that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wa salam sent to Malik al-Ashtar. To read it, to understand the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wa salam and to see the horizons that this man had 1400 years ago, the understanding this man had 1400 years ago and the knowledge that he had you see from his words that they are directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For a man to illustrate such an illustration to rule in such just manner, yeah. normal humans cannot reach such intellect. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam says, وَلْيَكُنْ نَظَرُكَ فِي عِمَارَةِ الْأَرْضِ أبلغ من نظرك في استجلاب الغراء الخراج أمير المؤمنين عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام also says to مالك الأشتر يا مالك also be aware that your main concern shouldn't be collecting taxes but it should be re-establishing the infrastructure of society at that time Farming was, you know, the main way that a government earned its money. So if the soil was destroyed, that means that the government had no money or funding. If the infrastructure, infrastructure is destroyed, how, the, how will the government fund itself? If Iraq does not strive to make more refineries, how will they accumulate wealth to pay off their debts or to leave their situation of being in a loan yeah. or in a state that they cannot even pay their citizens or their employees? which we see right now. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwala salatu wa salam tells Malik al-Ashtar, if people tell you that, you know, this year we have been hit with a famine, or this year we have been hit with a drought, or this year we have been hit with a decrease of rainfall and precipitation, then your main concern shouldn't be collecting tax from them. Your main concern is helping them build back the infrastructure and the farming. Because without that, then the country collapses, the government collapses. He says, 
building your infrastructure and Amaratul Ard, rebuilding the plantation mm -hmm. should be your main concern. The land and its development rather than its revenues. Because when you do rebuild the land and infrastructure, your revenues will come back again. But when, you, when you're not concerned about the land and it, its infrastructure, then it will majorly decrease and decline and collapse to a point that it's not fixable. Yeah, you lost both ends. I mean, you lost both ends. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam says, you know, keep them happy. When they tell you we have a shortage of water, then you need to help them with water or ask less. If, you know, last year they get, every farmer gave you a hundred tons of wheat, now because of the lackage of, of, of water, he has only 50. Don't ask him of what you asked him last year. Don't tax him of a hundred a hundred tons help him so your farmers can go back and climb back to a hundred tons per year it's amazing to see it's such a leader i mean and you know inshallah we can walk in his footsteps <laughs> And Amir al-Mu'mineen says, for a leader, if a leader asks for taxation without rebuilding the infrastructure of his government, he has destroyed his government and his nation. Akhrab <laughs> al-Bilad. You have destroyed your own nation with your own hands. That's what we see now. Wa al And he has killed his people and his citizens. That's why you see in countries with major poverty, the increase of drug use, the increase of divorce, the increase of prostitution, yeah. the increase of every single crime, yeah. the increase of depression, the increase of suicide, the increase of everything that's negative. Yeah. That could be placed in society. And Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam states this. You have destroyed your country and you have killed your citizens. If you want to tax people when they don't have. And if you do tax people and you don't build their country, you have also destroyed your nation and killed its people. I mean, 1,200 years before. You know, and, and what's even more funny than what we mentioned about governments today. Here, do you know, pe actually they come and charge you for the electricity that you use? And we have no electricity. Even though that we don't have electricity, for the two hours that they give you, you still have to pay a bill. That's for funny. the contaminated water that you use here, I, you know, I, I have like one of those filters in my house, yeah. the Aurora filters. Yeah. I changed the filters like maybe six days ago. I was looking at the filter today; it's almost black. Yeah. And then. And then the I case. have to pay for that. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and, if and we do pay for that, why don't you fix the water? And you need a water why don't, pump. You need a water <laughs> pump, you need a water pump. filter, and still, yeah. electricity shortage, and you're still paying for electricity bills. So where are the teachings of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Yeah, if we claim that we are followers of Ali. وَمَنْ طَلَبَ الْخَرَاجِ بِغَيْرِ عِمَارَةِ أخرب البلاد وأهلك العباد. سبحان الله. You have destroyed the nation and killed its citizens. That's exactly what we see. This exactly what, what see. we see. Exactly. Why? Why are there people begging on the streets? Why are there people dying out of hunger? Wallah, I've been to homes which 
which a piece of chicken was like a piece of diamond to them. Yeah, they've yeah. never seen, they've, yeah. you know, something that you find so simple in your homes, like chicken, you know, you eat a piece and the rest is leftovers. To some people in this country, it's, it's like a piece of diamond. But not, not even in Iraq. I mean, one time I seen a video, <clears throat> a documentary of, uh, of a, a citizen, I'm not going to mention the country, um, well, I'll mention it. It's 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 in Malaysia, and uh, after you know at night after um, sunset, he goes around to restaurants. He goes to the garbage can and collects all the waste foods and takes it back home. And his children are so happy with it. Yeah. You know why so, why so so much poverty? I mean I don't understand. Uh, we speak of human rights. We don't just speak it. We we scream it. Yet half, not, if not only um, the majority, 90% of the world are living under poverty. And, you know, subhanAllah. May Allah, inshallah, send everybody their sustenance. Inshallah. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam tells Malik al-Ashtar, فَإِن شَكَوْ ثِقْلًا أَوْ عِلَّ عَنْهُمْ If they came to you with exhaustion, sickness, insufficient rain, inadequate irrigation, lack of funding, then what do you do, O Malik? <laughs> Give them all your attention in order to remove all complaints, any complaints. Don't burden them if they can't pay. If they tell you we're exhausted, this year was too hot, we couldn't really work into, in the farms. Don't ask them for more. If they said, you know, we were hit with a sickness, for example, the swine flu, or the mad cow disease, or the chicken flu, yeah. you know, don't burden them more, more than they, they've been burdened. Sometimes there is sickness even in the wheat or the grains. And we saw this in our time yeah. where there was uh, sickness in grains and uh, it, yeah, it was burning. killing, it was yeah. burning it. So if, if there was insufficient uh, amount of rain, like California, California's uh, seeing severe uh, droughts. Even water usage is allowed only like once a day, once a week. If you have, if you want to water more than once or twice a week to the plants in your house, you have to pay extra tax. So, uh, such instances, don't ask them for more because they couldn't give more. They couldn't give more. Uh, Give them all your attention. See what they need. See how you could help them and better and empower their farming and their ways to empower the governments. Don't burden, burden them more than they, 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 they're already burdened. And this is what Amir al-Mu'mineen tells Malik al-Ajtar when it came to... Uh, collecting tax and how to deal with his tax taxpayers he says any shortage of revenue as a loss of of uh, as as uh, as a result of relief as a result of relief is not a real loss so for example the government because farmers were uh, you know fallen into loans and the government gave them pensions or reimbursed them with their money to the government. It might be, for example, a $20 billion, $30 billion, uh, you know, spending. Don't see it as a loss. See it as something fruitful, even though you didn't see revenues this year. But hopefully next year, you will have your money back in years to come. You will have revenues. But if you don't fix the problem, 
then you will go in a major decline. You will go in a major decline that will cause in what? The destroying of the country and the killing of man. It's rather an investment that will have good that will have good returns in terms of more pro productive lands and more pros and a more prosperous country. When, for example, I've heard in the United uh, Emirates, right now when you go to Dubai, you see trees and greenery everywhere. They have the largest flower. Uh, vineyard in the whole world correct when dubai or emirates is la is all sand it's yeah. barren desert yeah. how do they change the atmosphere of their country they used to buy i i i've heard that they used to buy soil from england and bring it back to their country buy soil so you know, in return, there's productivity. In return, it becomes a prosperous country. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam says, sometimes you have to spend. Your main concern shouldn't be paying, ta uh, collecting tax. Yeah. Your main concern is uh, prosperity of your country. Yeah. So sometimes, because of the lack of funding, you have to pay back. So the people of your nation are happy. And when the people of your nation are happy, you will be rewarded. You as a ruler will be rewarded in various forms. Their praise of you, they will praise you as a king. They will fight for you to the last breath. Your gratification at maintaining justice. They will love you. Right now, how many people of this nation lo love their leaders or our neighboring countries? How many of the people of the nation love the rulers today? You find very small percentage of people that are truly in love with their leaders. But Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam tells Malik al ashta that your reward will be in various forms. Their praise of you, your gratification at maintaining justice, your confidence of their support. You need to know that your nation is willing to support you. If you have not supported them, how can you guarantee they will support you? Definitely. If you haven't supported them and stood by their side, then why should they stand by, the, by your side? Since they know you stood by their side, when they needed it, they will stand by your side when you need it. Maybe you will be faced with a situation where you need to depend on their endurance, the endurance of your nation. For example, what happened to Iran when sanctions were placed upon the Iranian nation? The endurance of the nation built up their country or China or Japan yeah. or Russia. But when they stood by their country, the endurance of the country came back to support the government. They will give it to you willingly since prosperity can withstand endurance. Prosperity comes through tax collections and draining your nation? No, it does not. It comes when there is mutual support. When it's time to tax, you tax them accordingly and when the government and your nation is in mishap, you give them accordingly. The nation will come to stand with its government 100%. Yeah, when the, when the government um, respects the citizens, 
and we see with Amin bin Talib, I mean, the citizens are happily, and uh, you know, they're, they're they're fulfilled. Their desires are fulfilled with the government. Therefore, they when, when they go to help and support their government, they don't feel like that they're forced. They're not they're not feeling as if they're losing something. They look at it as if they're gaining something because Ascent? you know they're they're getting something in return. Ascent? But. Uh, if you have anything to add on before we move to the 15th Inshallah. article. The last thing, poverty. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Amir al-Mu'mineen says poverty, on the other hand, will cause the destruction of the land. Mm -hmm. For example, we saw how the Fatimi Empire collapsed. It was all based on poverty. That's why they became weak and weak and weak until a forest came and destroyed them and that caused their end their annihilation poverty will destroy any country any country that's doing better off could come and take over you yeah definitely could come and destroy you and take over subhanallah or your own people will revolt and destroy their own country, yeah, their own homes. They don't have anything to lose. I mean, they've lost everything. Look at countries like Somalia. What? Look at countries like Afghanistan. Look at countries yeah. like Pakistan. Why are groups like Boko Haram or Taliban, you know, gaining power in such countries? Because of poverty. Because of poverty. Because of poverty. They came in brainwash so you know whoever they give a hundred dollars he's yeah. willing to to do everything to blow himself up i mean we we see yeah. that i mean similar to what's happening right now in iraq what of led course. to what what led to the, to the fall of Mosul and ambar you know they they gave a bit of money to to the, the people that were running the area and they just left i mean where where did the dignity go yeah you know subhanallah but Inshallah. Now you want to read uh, yes. number Article 15? 15. Yes. Article 15 states that society has the right to, to require of every public agent an account of his administration. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam tells Malik al-Ashtar. He says, if they question you, you have to sit down and respond. Because you're the representative. You're nothing more. You're nothing more than a representative. So if they ask you about uh, tax collection, you have to respond. If they ask you about a certain amount of money, you have to respond. And we see in this government, sometimes, you know, because of rivalry between groups, a scandal pops out in the news that this person you know, one off with $50 million for two days. And then there is talks of putting him into court. Then it's Nesya and Mansiya. Yeah, it, it just goes away. Why? Because the people, the nation aren't in a place of questioning. Yeah. He's not a representative of the people. He's, he's, he, he, he's, he's by himself. Yeah, they're in hibernation. You know, if, 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 if there is someone questioning, it's another power by another group, by another militia. It's not by the citizens yeah. of the government. ظنت بك الرعية حيفا فأصهر لهم بعذرك وعدل عنك ظنونهم بإصحارك بإصحارك if they question to you, you say, I'm all ears. If they ask you something, you say, I'm all response. Yeah. Whatever you ask, I'm here to respond. Whatever your concerns are, I'm here willing to hear them. And this is the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdala salatu wa salam tells him ثم أمور من أمورك لا بد لك من مباشرتها منها إجابة عمالك He tells him We'll go through a list, ya Malik 
There are things that you have to do as a ruler. And one of them is questioning your employees. employees. Every single employee has to be questioned. Question all your employees when it comes to your soldiers, when it comes to your generals, when it comes to your bookkeepers, when it comes to your tax collectors. Every single employee in your government should know and should be questioned. Whether he's walking on a straight path or not. Even if he's not committing a mistake, you still have to question him. There has to be bookkeepers. There has to be questioning. You go and sit down with every single one of them. So none of your employees think that there isn't a moment of interrogation or questioning in which will lead him into thinking that I could do whatever I want because I won't be questioned. So every single person in your government as a representative of the government is under questioning and interrogation at all time. SubhanAllah, I mean it's, it's significant to see that because Ali Nabi Talib, um, he even placed himself uh, with, with the citizens. When no, he, he placed himself in a position of questioning yeah. and interrogation. Ayyuhal nas, innama ana wahidun minkum, li ma lakum wa alayya ma alaykum. If you're a question, I'm also in a position of questioning. Any citizen, any normal citizen can come question Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ahlan wa sahlan, you're more than welcome, come question me. And I... I'm in a position of answering. And this is absolute justice and equality. Definitely. When even the president, even the ruler, places himself in a position of interrogation. Equal with the citizens. Equal with the citizens. Right now, as an American citizen, can I go ask Obama about... The drone attacks that have been occurring in the Middle East, in Pakistan, and in, in Yemen, and even in Iraq. Can I go question him as an American citizen? Or can any, you know, random Joe go question the president or the minister of defense or any military general? That's classified information. For them, that's classified information. But in the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib, yeah. nothing is classified when it comes to the people. Because without the people, there would not be a government. There would not be a nation. I mean, and this are the exact same words that they live by. The government of the people. The government of the people, by the people, for the people. I mean, it explicitly says right here that uh, the general public has a right to, uh, to ask um, anything from the government and the government is obliged to, to answer. Yet when, when we ask for our rights, I mean, we're not asking for something uh, classified uh, out of uh, even not just that, even just regular, um, just regular rights, you know, human rights. When we ask for it, um, it's, it's not granted as if they answer you with, with a very... Uh, intelligent, uh, intelligent uh, answer, and uh, yet we we don't see anything implemented. But uh, inshallah, we can you know Im Im improve society. Even though inshallah. you know we need a inshallah. whole a reformation inshallah. of of government. But uh, moving on to Article 16, uh, it's very similar to what we have um, stated Red before uh, in in the previous episodes. It states that a society in which the observance of the law is not assured, nor the separation of powers defined, has no uh, constitution at all. If a law is not enforced, then you can't really hold someone accountable. Mm -hmm. And we spoke about this mm -hmm. uh, on the nights of uh, the holy month of Ramadan. Definitely. So... Uh, Elaborating number 17, inshallah, and we will uh, 
inshallah. come to a conclusion. There, there, there's a very um, uh, a very nice story of Abu Bi Talib, peace be upon him, when he was in ruling. Um, he went to Masjid al Kufa to pray very quickly, so he told someone to watch over his uh, his horse. When Abu Talib went in the mosque and came out, he saw the carriage that went over the horse was taken. So he asked, they told him that the person that you, t that you asked to wash your horse the saddle, took it. The saddle. The, sorry, the, the saddle. The carriage for a camel. <laughs> sorry, the saddle. Yeah. So um, he, he took it. So Ali ibn Talib was very surprised. Subhanallah. Uh, he required it uh, haram, yet I was going to give it to him uh, halal. by halal. halal. So subhanallah, I mean, we see, we, we see uh, Ali ibn Talib, even, even that, he was, he was supposed to give it to him. But he still he wanted to, to give it to him yeah, as a gift. As a gift for you know, he stole it. <laughs> subhanallah. It's it's weird to see that. But moving to number sixteen. Seventeen. Uh, sorry, seventeen. It says since property uh, pro sorry, since property is an is an inviolable and sacred right, no one shall be deprived or thereof except where public necessity legal determined shall clearly demand it, and then only on conditions that the owner shall have been previously or adequately uh, uh, damnified. So inshallah, Sayyidina, if you can elaborate inshallah. on that. First, what happened after Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam took ruling mm -hmm. or took power and what he mentioned. As soon as Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam came into power, he redistributed or re took all the homes that were distributed unjustfully in the time of the government of Uthman. Uthman came and handed, you know, what belonged to Allah and the servants of Allah as if it was his own. He gave his cousin, he gave his brother-in-law, he gave his mother-in-law. He didn't leave anyone that he didn't know or thought he knew a piece of land just so they can uh, you know be satisfied with him Amir al-Mu'mineen came back took the wealth of the nation back where it, to, it belonged and redistributed it based on equality and based on a person's you know financial being whether they are poor or not. If you're a rich person, you don't deserve free land. There are people who are sleeping on the street. Yeah. There are people who are homeless. They deserve to be homed. Thus he says, وَمَن لَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ عِقَارٌ وَلَا دَارٌ وَلَا مَالٌ فَلَا سَبِيلَ عَلَيْهِ If there is a person who doesn't have a house, he doesn't have a piece of land, doesn't have any assets, doesn't have any wealth or money. You want, you still want to question him? Who is he going to bring you the what money? Is he, what are you going to question him about? The government has no say so over such a person. Definitely has no say so over a per such a person Super because hard. it's the the government's duty to give him to a home. Him. And to support him. SubhanAllah, it's significant to see that. Um, Welfare system yeah. was placed in the government of Ali ibn Abi I was Talib. just about to mention that, yeah. And Social welfare was established in the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You read my mind, Sayyid. Huh? You what you see mind, today, yeah. you know, refugees, my refugees, yeah. welfare, Obamacare. <laughs> this was all. <laughs> And in place and ingrained by Imam Ali here. He even yeah, I mean what what I can by Ali ibn Abi Talib here. Yeah, he actually lived by it. He lived with the people. He even sat to to feed the orphans and and feed the children of the widows. I, I mean Subhanallah. Yet we still see governments, you know, um, exploiting their citizens even when they don't even have anything. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu says, 
if a person does not own anything, then the government can't really question him. Once you've given him a home, a, a roof to live under, and money to support himself with and his family, as every government should do by the money of taxpayers, then you can question him. And Islam illustrates this. If a person is in a situation of poverty, then most Islamic Sharia laws of punishment are not in place. If a person is, is, is in poverty, if he steals, he's not punished. If he does anything else because of the situation of poverty, to feed himself, he's not punished. Once the government gives him, then it could hold him accountable. Subhanallah, but that's under certain restrictions, yes. I believe. Inshallah. Um, and in the past several nights, we illustrated the 17 laws, 17 commandments, and the words and the livelihood of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam. And for that reason, Ali ibn Abi Talib was, was killed and murdered in Masjid al Kufa. I mean, during his life, even before um, he became Khalifa, and during the time of, uh, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, he was the one to, uh, to walk with justice. He was justice. Salam Yet Allah. when he became the ruler, you know, the, there's famous stories of uh, two women, uh, one Arab and one non-Arab. They came to uh, get their share, their monthly share, and they received equal. The Arab was like, yeah, why did you give me equal to, to the non-Arab? He said, everyone's equal in, in, in the eyes of Ali ibn Abi Talib. There's no, there's no differentiation. Yet yeah, what did they do to that, uh, that just person? I mean, they, they murdered him in, in the holy place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the mosque. But inshallah we can, Allah, inshallah we can learn um, from the teachings and uh, we can inshallah. ponder upon the words inshallah. of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, so thank you very much, Zayna, for joining us thank over the past few nights. Uh, it, was, it was a blessing to have you on the show. A blessing for uh, having uh, thank you. Th thank Pleasure you very much. Uh, thank you very much, respected viewers, for joining us over the past few nights of Ramadan. Um, hopefully, inshallah, we can learn um, uh, from this blessed month. Uh, because this month, uh, as we mentioned from the uh, beginning episodes, uh, it's a month of mercy, forgiveness, and blessings. So, inshallah, uh, you know, during the days of Eid, we can, you know, um, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to, and to guide us on the right path uh, so we can, you know, go into heaven and uh, bless our sights with uh, the Prophet Muhammad and the Ahlul Bayt, inshallah. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next show. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Allah khalikum inshallah.